Wildstein Gruppen, aka Whitestone Group. I'm guessing. I don't know what this is gonna be called in the international market, but you know, and if I find out that it's called something else, I will edit the title of this video. In the small Jutlandic village of Whitestone. I'm just gonna go with the Danish names. Wildstein. The tavern owner, Marius Fiel, and his wife, Gudrun Fiel, have, they're, they're celebrating two things. The year is 1942. That's not what they're celebrating, though. They've got a grandchild an infant, and it's the 25th wedding anniversary for the couple. So they have a big dinner, and we get a real sense of the connection between the, the people, the family, as well as just the friends from around, not all of them are from the steam. Over time, they decide to help with resistance against the Nazis in the capacity of picking up shipments of weapons and paratroopers and, you know, housing and transporting them. They don't themselves actually blow anything up or shoot anyone. This is, of course, a diff difficult decision because at the time it was unclear when the war was going to end and how it was going to end. And most of these people have families. And something that the film unfortunately does not cover, but as far as I understand the actual history, this group actually inspired a lot of other resistance forces in Denmark. And, you know, eventually it got out of the control of the Nazis, who would strike down hard on resistance forces and you know, make examples of them so that others would be deterred, and in this case, others were inspired instead. This film very wisely focuses on the people. I, it, that was the exact correct choice to make. This is not a a tale of great action or in fact it, it is in no way an action movie it parts of it are you know qualify as thriller and it is definitely a tense film it's a drama thriller i'd really say what it is a story about however is just the people the human beings who tried to help and who made that tough decision and you know, how it affected them and their families. The first 10 or 20 minutes what we see is just these people and their you know good relationship with one another the you know the people of the village and the friends from other Jutlandic towns, you know, old friends. You get a real sense of the camaraderie and just the, you know, we, we witness the, the wedding celebration, uh, wedding anniversary celebration, really feels like a genuine family celebration. You know, 
it doesn't it doesn't feel the need to try to distract from that it it feels genuine it feels like you know this is a real family and this family truly you know the people truly care for each other the the occupation is under the surface as it needs to be for people who are trying to get by you can't constantly focus on the big malevolent elephant in the room all the time you need to you know talk about other things focus on other things you know for the first five or ten minutes of the movie you know you might not even think that it takes place during the war except for the whole you know the fact that it very early on lets you know that it starts in 1942 but suddenly the Nazis creep their way into the conversation and it really is just this sort of you know it's it's the the Nazis the way they're treated in this film especially early on is very very clever and very careful we don't see them very much again especially early on there might be an occasional patrol car pass passing by on the highway or such but really they're a sort of omnipresent evil that just you know you you don't talk too loudly about it but at the same time you really want to do something about it and that really works well with just how these these people and you you know you see how these people who genuinely care deeply for each other they have they're very divided on should the nazis be fought you know can you know can we even do something if you know if we tried and just this sort of granted the there are there's uh, there are not many characters who are sympathetic to the nazis in the film and those characters are arguably not very well fleshed out but everyone else is everyone but the nazis really and this film is not about the nazis it's about the people who you know who who made that choice I don't want to repeat myself, but yeah. And so with just establishing how these people are, you know, you see them toiling away in the kitchen, you see them preparing for the feast, you see them during the feast. You know, this makes a great use of Danish culture from the time. You know, I honestly I don't think international audiences will be able to completely appreciate it, but very early on, for example, they sing this old proud Jutlandic song. Not just Danish, but specifically Jut Jutlandic. And uh, I, I guess the title would translate to the Jutlandic individual is strong and tough, or big and tough, something like that. And, you know, it really sows the seeds. You know, you kind of get this feeling that and you know, these people are very proud of who they are and they are the type of people who would be willing to stand up against you know the Nazis and without it being a sort of you know again everyone in this is a proper character there's personality and some of it is very nicely established and from very early on like just the the relationship between the two the two sisters i believe they're the daughters of the you know the the owner of the tavern uh, Maius and just yeah the the way they relate to each other and they you know 
one of them is stubborn, the other is more, you know, trying to live up to the parents' expectations, and, you know, I've heard some bad things about the acting. I can maybe see a third of the acting as being unconvincing or sometimes downright bad, but the rest is great. These people, I, I know one of them from other stuff, but I, don't, I haven't been watching a lot of Danish stuff. Maybe I should know others of them, but they're fantastic. I'd especially say something like, you know, even the children, frankly. Like I said, the, the two sibling, you know, the, the two girls, the two sisters, great performances. And Marius and Gudrun, their relationship and their dialogues and just the, the whole way, that, that is some of the strongest stuff in the film and some of the most emotionally involving. This film, I would never say that, I, I wouldn't say that it ever treads into the sentimental, which, you know, something like this could really, excuse me, risk doing, and, excuse me, that would really detract a lot from it. It does go, you know, it does make mistakes, but that is definitely not one of them, if you ask me. And since you're watching this video, I guess you are asking me. The, but yes, this, this structure of, you know, starting with these celebrations and letting us know how these people are when things are at their best is very effective. And then, you know, after a while, you know, I would also note that this film is quite nicely paced. But yes, after a while, the recruiting begins. This is not a spoiler. You know, and we have Maius going around to these people, asking them, could you help out with this? And the excellent thing about this is, this is not the first time you see these people. You might not know everything about them, but this is not like... You know, the, these people have already been somewhat established during the party, so you know that there's a close relationship here. You know, this is not just someone that you're, you're seeing for the first time and you don't know what they're like. It's a very historically accurate and authentic film. The perspective is very much on these these people, you know, mainly the ones from, you know, the village, and this is very effective. You know, there's again not a spoiler. You know, they're picking up stuff dropped by English planes, so obviously, you know, there's gonna be some planes flying by, and. The film never shows the inside of the cockpit. The film never shows a close-up of the plane. What it does is show the plane passing overhead as seen by someone at the level of one of these people. You know, you see it fly by overhead. And it is immensely effective. You know, you really feel like the plane just flew over your head. You know, and that's also one of the reasons I would actually say this movie watch it in the cinema at least once. It is worth it. It is not an action film, but it is a film that makes great use of something, you know, th things like surround sound and, you know, a massive screen. It it really deserves to be watched like that. But yes, th things feel extremely close like that. The camera work is essentially all handheld. Now, this serves two functions, and both of them quite well. In one, you know, part of the way, it's that when you see these, th this essentially family, you know, not all of them are blood-related, but it's a big family, you know. 
man, that sounds corny. It really makes, you know, during the parties, for example, it feels like you're watching a home video from a family gathering, you know. And not so much as, you know, that bad kind of, you know, man that uncle can't, you know, tape worth of crap. More like, you know, oh, I remember that party. And, yeah, it, it has this sort of intimacy to it, you know, it, it feels like you're there with these people experiencing what they're experiencing. And then it has the Paul Greengrass kind of effect, where it really heightens the tension. And that's another thing, this is a very, very tense film. Now granted, a little of it is false tension. And near the end, there is a scene that I would have omitted completely. It was utterly unnecessary, and frankly, muddled up the last portion of the film, the, you know, the, the closing scenes. But when this film goes for being intense, it really gets, you know, you are on the edge of your seat, and just... What I'd also like to really point out, I've also I already talked a little bit about how the Germans, for a while, you don't see them much. For maybe the first half of the film, the Nazis barely seem human in this. And what I'd really rec what I what I'd really compare them to is the robots from Terminator, the the flashback stuff where you just see these machines often from a distance and just these, you know, just this light trying to find resistance forces and just they're just going through them. They're just, you know, they they are this evil force that is just seeking out the people that we want to, you know, get through it alive. And that is extremely effective. And again, this is not a film that should particularly humanize the Nazis. There are other films for that. And that is certainly also, you know, we shouldn't forget that they were also humans. They did horrible things, but they were still human beings. But anyway, that is not what this film is about. And to these people who Remember, these were not warriors. These were just villagers. They were simple people. There's one bit where one... He's basically... He's a kid. And he has to refuse to join the the forces. And, and his parents are there with him. And it's quite clear that they're really the reason why he's declining. And the mother points out this is our only son. If he dies, who is supposed to take care of the farm when we die? And this is such a powerful, because that's, it's absolutely true. This was all they had. If, if he had died, there would have been no future for their farm. They would have, you know, their entire lives and their entire you know, livelihood would be lost. Everything that they had worked so hard for would just disappear. And, and, but, but yes, yeah, so to these people, obviously, trained soldiers that, you know, that would kill them if they found them, would have seemed like just vicious killing machines. The dialogue has some moments of excessively obvious exposition and awkward lines and the like, but it does also have some really powerful lines. The music 
there is a lot of Danish music from the time and several nationalistic songs. They even fit in. I don't know if it, I don't know if this is the title, but something like "We Are Bound on Hand and Mouth." Or, you know, that's roughly what it would translate into in English. A very clever Danish protest song, which to the Germans who did not understand English, uh, Danish quite as well as us Danes, they would think it was simply a love song, but in reality it was about Denmark and yeah. So they, they fit that in there and and some of the music is used quite ironically into great effect. I suppose that is more or less what there is to say about the film. Very powerful, moving film that just really grabs you right from the start and really doesn't let go until the end credits begin. Yeah, fantastic. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.